I can repeat Mr. Heinlein's advice to to writers because it's it's probably if you if you if you pay attention to to his dictums, uh, you don't need to know much else. If you want to be a writer, you've got to do several things. The first one is you have to write. You have to actually have to put your tail in a chair and your fingers on a typewriter, in his case typewriter or a keyboard. He never quite got the hang of writing with a computer. His, he, he had one to play with, but he was still writing on a, on a big IBM typewriter when, when he died. Um, you have to put your fingers on the keyboard and your seat in a, in a chair and, and do it. You have to write. You have to finish it. You can't just keep writing things and starting them and carrying them around and hauling them out of your briefcase and reading them to your friends in bars. You have to finish what you write. And having finished it, you have to stop mucking with it and get it done and send it to somebody who actually has money to buy it with and presses to print it on. It does you no good to have your best friend read your story or the geek down the street or or even your high school teacher, they're not going to buy it from you. The, the only opinion that counts of, of your story is whether or not somebody will pay you money for it. And if they will, then that, and, it, and the only reason to rewrite it is, as Mr. Heinlein said, if somebody says, uh, you know, Here, I like that, but it needs this and this, and if you do that, I think I'll, I'll buy it. Then, then it's worth, re otherwise, write a new story. If, 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 you, if your words are so precious that you can't just set them aside when this didn't work and start over. I was talking to a young man tonight who's one of the writers here, and he's told me about two novels he's got he's trying to sell. And I listened to them, and they were both about subjects about which he doesn't know very much, but he thought they would be interesting. And, so, and yet he works in a profession in which there, there, there are dozens of darn good stories. He thinks what he does is dull. And I said, fine, that's, that, that's dull, but now think about what might happen, and it might not be dull. And there you know the details. You know what's going on. You know, don't, don't try to keep endlessly working with the stuff you've already done. You try to sell it, that's fine. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that, but write more. Don't, don't try to go back and fix that. You know, he said, well, I think I wrote it in first person and, and maybe it would be better if I wrote it in third. I said, if you want my advice, you'll just set it aside and go write the new story. Don't, don't try, to, try to deal with it. And if you do that, if you, if you write, you finish what you write and you get it out to people who can buy it and you don't sit around endlessly rewriting, then at some point you'll learn to write. Now, in in my experience, it takes somewhere around half a million to a million words before you get to the point where you're no longer thinking about what you're writing and how you're doing it and the technique and where to put your fingers on the keyboard and all of the other mechanics of writing and, and grammar and style. You're thinking about the story and you're telling the story without thinking that you're, I'm writing. You're just writing it. When you get to that point, then you've got a chance. And until you get to that point, maybe you do, but you probably don't. Because you are building it brick by brick, and building brick by brick usually doesn't make for a very good building. Uh, especially if you didn't know what it was going to do, and you keep adding bricks hoping that eventually it's going to look like something you want. Uh, the other thing I would advice I would give new writers is advice Mr. Heinlein gave me a long time ago and which has served me well. If you're going to choose grammars and styles, choose good standard grammatical English and what we used to call high grammatical style. Don't, don't experiment, don't write experimental spellings, don't try to write phonetic spellings, don't, don't, don't in other words try to improve the English language, use it use it as, as correctly as possible. And the reason for that is simple. The, uh, the number of people who will be irritated by your writing in good standard grammar is very low. The number of people who will simply not want to read it because you wrote in some non-standard experimental grammar is very high. You know, there are people who think that it would be politically a good thing to change the impersonal pronoun in English from he to she. Uh, 
sounds like a good idea. It makes dreadful reading. It's very hard to read stories that, have, that use little gimmicks like that. Just regular high style and good grammar. And if you don't know good grammar, and boy, there are a lot of people who think they know how to write who cannot spell and do not know the basic elements of English grammar, go learn them. Get a good grammar program, get a good spell checking program, get a good grammatical checking program. Try to fool the grammar program. It will tell you things that you know is bad advice. Fine, try to fool it into thinking it's good. When you get to the point where you can write by all the rules and you can follow all the rules even though they don't lead to where anything you like, now you are permitted to go play around with the rules and break them and do things to make your work more dramatic and more effective. But if you don't know what the rules are in the first place, how do you know whether what you're doing is a good thing to do or not? So that's, that's Mr. Heinlein essentially made that speech to me 40 years ago, and uh, I pay it forward here.